I'm with Phil Alexander, the Information Security Officer at University Medical Center, a 412-bed hospital in Lubbock, Texas, and the primary hospital in the UMC Health System. Phil, you participated in a panel that addressed cybercrime in healthcare. Um, if you were to rank your top security threats, how does cybercrime fit into that? You know, how important is it to your organization? Um, well, I think it's a uh it's, it's important uh, mainly because we st we're starting to see a rise in cybercrime, uh, refocused from the traditional banking and, and those type of industries to places like uh, education and, and healthcare. Because um, <clears throat> typically in these organizations like uh, healthcare um, industries, um, the lax you know, for mm -hmm. years, uh, as we move from paper to electronics, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't do such a good job necessarily on uh, emphasis on secure securing that data, uh, and we're starting to see now the you know the the, the malware writers or the the hackers and those kind of guys mm -hmm. uh, come after uh, those weak spots. So when you have a weakness uh, that's something that's easy to exploit, the soft targets, if you will, we used to call them the government soft targets, uh, then uh, then that's who they're coming after. And so uh, plenty of data there to exploit. And when you leave yourself open and vulnerable, they're going to come after it. So I think that um, I think that's where that's where it's at right now. What are the uh, what are the most common types of breaches, and how do you monitor for them? Uh, right now, we're st we're, the, the, we're seeing the basics. Um, we're easily identifying the basics. For, so, for instance, uh, phishing and spear phishing, that sort of thing. Uh, phishing emails, uh, phone calls. Uh, we get a number right now, uh, for some reason, we're getting a number of phone calls uh, where they're phishing for information, whether it be uh, directly to the patient room or to our, our uh, <coughs> employees directly uh, trying to get information. Uh, Trying to trying to poke at our network. So, for instance, uh, uh, recently we got a number of calls into um, uh, some of our secretaries asking what type of uh, faxes and and printers and copiers we were using, uh, pretending to be um, one of our vendors. Um, didn't mention them, but so you know they're they're poking holes, just trying to find where they can exploit. Knowing those those uh, pieces of equipment are on our network and they can exploit those. Um, and so that's really where we're seeing right now is just the basic type malware where they're trying to get in. Um, so nothing real big right now. Do your employees, do the providers understand the, the seriousness of, of these types of, of issues? You know, I think that um, a good, uh, and, and, and I don't want to be cliche, but I think a good security awareness program is, is probably still, uh, you know, in, in security we've, we've said it for years, you know, our weakest link is the employee, right? And the, and the FBI guy earlier was talking about the insider threat, you know, uh, problem. And, and it goes back to you can spend millions of dollars on infrastructure, uh, all sorts of analytical tools, but that employee doing just the wrong thing, saying the wrong thing, clicking on the wrong email, um, Plugging in the wrong, uh, you know, device, whether it's an infected thumb drive or whatever, uh, usurps everything that you got in place. Uh, you're just never going to have enough tools. So, yeah, I think I think making the uh, helping helping those in, uh, individuals understand that, <clears throat> and that's why we were getting those phone calls. We've stood up a very aggressive uh, education plan uh, program at UMC, uh, really trying to educate from the top down. We have leadership lunch and learns every quarter. Uh, we have uh, fishing tournaments uh, where we go out and we fish and you know uh, and 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 then teach them what it's about. Um, we do departmental lear learning, uh, and we talk to our employees not on on a corporate level. So when I talk to our employees uh, at these at these meetings, we don't talk about our patient data necessarily or the corporate data. We talk about their personal data. We talk about their finances and I talk about their mobile device and their kids uh, information. Uh, I was talking to a group the other day about, you know, one in 40 children have their identity stolen before they're 18. You know, they become 18, and guess what? They have a home they didn't know about, right? Um, and so if we could bring it personal level, uh, then I believe they bring it in. And in, in the, the, the example I gave a while ago about the printers and the copiers is a good example. Uh, after educating for a number of times about how important that little things that don't seem right, if it smells fishy, we always say, if it smells fishy, report it. And so these young ladies in Southwest Cancer was calling my office saying, hey, somebody's calling here asking about what type of printers and faxes and stuff we have just sounded odd. Um, normally they would have just given that information over. So I think it's very important that we do educate and I do think they're learning. So Thank you very much. Thank you.